Good morning. Today I'm going to continue the lecture on the making of the monarch. This is lecture 2B. Um, originally it was not supposed to be in two lectures, but after I uploaded it I noticed that um, the ending was missing where I describe how the parts are split to create the internal kaleidoscope. And also, I lost uh, probably five to ten minutes out of the in the middle where I explained the diagram and how it works. I don't know how that happened. Um, also, my hard drive disappeared out of my office this last week, so I had to go buy a, a new one um, along with my book that I'd written on the subject. Um, so if you keep me in prayer, I'd really appreciate it. And I'm going to go ahead and start with prayer. And I'm going to show you the diagram. I made a bigger one. I have it all memorized, and um, that's where literally all my information is, is it's memorized. Father, I do pray and ask that you bless this time, that you teach and instruct those who are desiring wisdom from you, that they would be able to set free those that are in need. In Christ's name, I do pray. Amen. All right, I'm going to begin. I made a new, uh, I made a new one. This is the brain stem. Down here is where the omega programming in the upper three-eighths of the brainstem will be. This is the no-conscious part of the brain. From here to here in the brain, the seventh and the sixth layer to the bottom of the fifth, the fifth is where the rear aspect of the fight or flight begins. This is all no-conscious. This is where the computer is located. This is where omega programming happens. It's templated. That's why it has to be done in infancy. Because as the brain develops, they program the child. And as the brain develops, it never knows anything but being conditioned. Every aspect of its life is controlled until about the age of seven. At the age of 12, it will be put into its own full commission. If it's a beta, it will be commissioned to work by itself. At the age of 12, it'll go to assignments. It'll make sure it's there. It'll do whatever it's supposed to do. If it's a delta, it'll already be practicing what it's supposed to do. So. Just above the seventh layer, before you reach the oasis, the oasis is where the mind stores. It's a center in the calm, calm point where the effulgence of the life force comes out of the brainstem. The oasis is in the very center of that. That's where the brain stores alternate personality shells. It is a coping self-defense life mechanism, survival mechanism, so the brain already has, pre-programmed within its design, shell alters so that if it disassociates, and it needs to form a complete person or personality to take on a scene, a scenario, or an event, those are located here in the oasis. It's just above the central fissure point of the brain stem. Now, down here is where the original infant or life force will be. This is also where the dwelling place, the throne of the devil is. It is attached to the QA nerves and those that go to the, to the heart. It also controls the sympathetic nervous system. This is called Babylon. It's the seat from which Baal reveals himself. Down here, that infant will also be called the beast. It will have been dedicated prior to birth. It will have been infiltrated and attached to at conception. This is the place or the seat where the will is. The will for survival bypasses all other things. It's part of the coping. Here's where the unholy trinity will reside. You're going to find the devil. You're going to find uh, the Antichrist. You're going to find Satan down here. This is where all alpha programming happens. It's just above that, right up here, in the part of the brain known as the computer. This is where the basement is. And this is also where the uh, programmer or the father will imprint himself. So he's always there as a controller. This infant will be split into two parts, a left and a right hemisphere creating bicamerality. That part, now as you notice, I drew a compass here because the compass has degrees on it. Uh, the, the compass is at the top. I drew a square here at the bottom. The square has degrees and they will split each side into 12, 12 parts. So what they do is they originally will split the infant into two parts, a left and a right, a uh, dark and a light child, a night child, a day child. They will then split that part into four more parts. And then each one of those four parts will be split into 12. 
as you see, I've tried to draw an infinite loop around them. This is where the cogs and the wheels are in the center. And these spin this way, but they also spin in a circle around. And the way it works is in the conscious, the prefrontal lobes is where your conscious is, the presenting altar. What happens is one group of, or one pyramid of four split into 12 each, creating kaleidoscope, will be in the front at one time. There will be a four down here that's asleep in the bottom of the brain, a four that's up here. And only one will be present, but it will be a culmination of those 12, 12, 12, 12, select fragment parts put together, and that's why it's called a kaleidoscope. I'm going to explain it a little more clear. So what happens is, say you need to switch into the dark side at night or to go do a job, it'll switch like this, and this pyramid will come to the top. And then out of that pyramid, it will create an alternate personality that it needs. Now the fragments, the reason why the person never remembers is because that personality that does the event or takes the pain will be the compilation of several different alternate splits. For instance, you may have four different altars here, you will have, and there'll be 12 splits out of each one of them. It may take one from here, one from here, one from here, and one from here, and bring them together and then shine through the main part, which is in the middle, which will be the god or goddess over this pyramid, and what happens is when it rises to the top, the light of Lucifer, which will shine from the bottom, the Antichrist, will rise up, shine through them on the earth, and the moonlight from heaven will shine down and will radiate through that individual. And when it does, that's the one that is at the front. It's a combination of four to five different, what we would call shards, pieces, or fragments brought together to create a whole. And when it comes to the presenting conscience, it does its job that it's programmed to do or conditioned to do. And when it's done, it splits apart. And those memories split with it. And because they're fragmented, there'll be a conditioning element in them to forget, to not allow it to go to midterm or long-term memory, but to have it split, disintegrate, and become a non-existent or a part of what the brain will flush because it's not a solid memory. Now, the way it works is you have heaven. In heaven, you'll find the queen of heaven. Isis, Ishtar, Mergan, Circe, Bridget. Uh, these are all names for her. Uh, Aphrodite, Diana, that's a big one. Um, Minerva. You'll have the Queen of Heaven up here, and it'll also be Ashtaroth. This is the place where the Tower of Babel is. It is to bring the host of heaven down into the person. Now, as you see, I put a cylinder around it because that represents the seraphim, the angels that ascend and descend up and down and through the person that's duplicated into the systems on the left and right, and that's how they're put together. That's called a double helix system, because these revolve, and you know, they go like this, it's a circular, so that one of these pyramids will be in the presenting conscious at a time, with the light of Lucifer shining through it, creating a single person that will basically present themselves, do whatever needs to happen. One will always be down in the unconscious, asleep, the dark child is not a part of that. He's down here. He's separated because he's of the original person. They were split out of him or her. So the dark child will be telepathic, fully given over to the devil, as dark as night. It won't want to use its mouth. It'll only want to communicate through nods. It will not like to speak. Reason is it's highly telepathic, highly telekinetic, clairvoyant, clairaudient. It's a scanner, it's a far viewer. The basis, the downward pyramid, is the degrees. It's how the temple is built, where Lucifer rules from, or Satan. That's the square. The compass is how it is turned. It's controlled from the, the queen of heaven and the god of earth. They work together 
and by doing this they control every aspect of the person you have heaven earth and hell hell is presided over by the devil earth by Satan heaven by Ashtaroth Isis, Brigand, Ishtar, whatever your name is, your religion, that, that'll be the goddess up there. Um, Jupiter, you know, whatever, Venus. So, this is the grandfather, the father, the son, the grandmother, the mother, the maiden. The mother, the maiden, the, the hag, or the son, the father, the crone. Cronus. Now, these two worlds here, or these two splits here, will have four worlds each. Now, for instance, on a beta, this side over here, you may have the land of Oz, right here. You may have directly across from that a, uh, wit, uh, a, a person who is, say, a high priestess, a dark wizard. You may have above that um, Alice in Wonderland. You may have, if she's a Delta, Peter Pan and the Lost Boy system down here. And they will all work together for the same good of the person. Gometra programming, they'll be programmed over here because a Gometra needs to exist during the daylight hours amongst people. She needs to be able to socialize or he does. Gometra will, will disinformate, but they will also take a screen. For instance, they'll have them assigned to people that have the ability to, to, to uh, put out information or to receive information. Gometras will be programmed and in positions to where they'll have the technology and the ability to use it so they can scan and manipulate, control, or change any information a person receives or that goes out. It's not just news and media, but it's also to control hard drives, computers, um, visual information, what's allowed on or off the web, what's allowed to be published, what's not allowed to be published. My little book of prayers got pulled seven times from Amazon and, and the publisher, and they, once for a hyphenation mark. I had to, to really do, get very serious with them because they kept pulling it, and they couldn't give me a lawful reason why. Uh, well, it's because it has 25 pages of renunciations in the back. It's designed to help people become free. So. This is the kaleidoscope. The kaleidoscope is simply fragments that are put together and they form a cohesive whole which can do the job that it needs. I'm going to go into more details on that in my next uh, section. And one of the things I want to show you is on the dark side you'll have the tree of death. On the light side you'll have the tree of life. It'll reside right in the very center here. And in a druidic form it will be the very center and out of that will be a, there will be a dryad or a living person in it. At the base of that will be either a boy or a girl with the key to it. At the base of the tree where the roots go down to the ancestors will be a sacrifice that has been made by the child. They've been forced to murder an infant. Its essence will be trapped in a little sarcophagus box. There will be a single flower or a group of mushrooms, which are the things that are, uh, hold all the memories so that they'll reprogram themselves if anything happens. And inside that tree are all the rituals, and this is high-level programming, are all the rituals that are designed to demonize each shard or each part of the kaleidoscope. It works as a cohesive whole, even though they're all done separately, the splits. So that's the internal tree mechanism, tree of life, tree of death. Uh, you're going to understand there'll be a forest where the actual maiden will be hidden in, because she's been dedicated and sanctified and given over to be Satan's bride or Lucifer's bride. Usually at the age of five, her father will lead her through a ceremony where she ascends the stairs. And uh, for a male, it's the male will ascend the stairs to the goddess. And uh, they will copulate and do rituals that are not worth describing here in order to do that. So the thing is, is we have the will down here. This is where the soul is. All the decision making is actually controlled down here at the base by the devil. We have the spirit, which ties you to the spirits and the sins of the ancestors up in the heaven, where the queen of heaven is, the king of heaven rules. 
Uh, Ashkaroth is androgynous. He's male or female. Isis is the same way if you understand the true aspect of it. The earth is where Satan is. That's where the body is. And the body is used and controlled by the soul, and the spirit is that which controls, spins it, turns it to make it subservient to the soul's desire. The body gives in. The god of this world, whether it's Ra, Satan, Shimshoni, um, Allah is another name. Allah means who is like the sun. Um, Arabics, Persians, Muslims have been sodomizing their daughters since time began. Allah was one of them. He, uh, Muhammad was one of them. That's why he would choose infant brides, literally. And four, five, three years old is so he could condition and program them. And they would consider the bride to be a virgin for Lucifer or Satan as long as they just sodomized it. If they, they saved the vagina, they would say that was either for Lucifer or Satan. And then they would give that over to bestiality because that is a way that he can enter the beast and then copulate with them and uh, confirm the marriage vows. All right, this is Dr. Knotts. I've tried to clarify this and fill in the gaps of what was missing off the last video. Um, I hope this has been of help to you. And if you have any questions, if you need counseling, let me know. I've been uh, counseling for going on 30 years now. Uh, so I pray that the Lord has blessed you through this in Christ's name.